Psst, kid, you want the latest and greatest router OS? Guess what? You can get it right now from Microtix website. Version 7 has finally released. It's been a 10 year long, I think, process in the making. A lot of people has been anticipating this for so long and it finally released. So I'd like to go over this video just to cover briefly what is in the new uh, router OS, even though Normus does an amazing job explaining it on the Microtech official video. I just want to dive into it myself and also just load router OS version seven on a Microtech to show you how easy and quick it is to install. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so let's go over the changes. I've got the Microtech newsletter open that does cover all or most of the changes at least. If there is something that's not covered, you could potentially just find it on the Microtech forums. But what I'd like to point out is they start off by saying that the kernel has been updated. So the Linux kernel, which is the heart of the Microtech device, has been updated to version 5.6. And this does allow them to run stuff like WireGuard. So WireGuard, it's a new fancy VPN service that we can run. Um, it works a lot like IKV2 almost, um, where we can connect using almost like a secret type of handshake type of thing. But it's it's pretty phenomenal. I've got a video on the channel showing you how to set up um, WireGuard. And it's really nice. Uh, big other changes, the routing in general has been changed. So it's not just BGP or OSPF. Both of these uh, protocols have been changed quite a lot. Um, with Router OS version 7, uh, they've implemented something called affinity control. Here we can see what they're talking about. And what this comes down to is in previous versions of Router OS, your BGP was running off of a single core. So the entire process was on the core. And if that core maybe was uh, getting bottlenecked by other processes, it might cause some issues with the BGP. So what they've done now is with the affinity control, it is processed by two cores and it is per peer. So each peer can use a core and then <laughs> actually it's gonna use two cores per peer. And one of the cores are actually doing the input or what's coming into the BGP peer, into your router, and also what is leaving out of your router on a different core. So that is quite nice because a lot of people were turned off of using uh, Microtech perhaps for BGP because it was running off of the single core, even though it wasn't that much of an issue. Um, some people would raise this as a concern and this has now been fixed on router OS version seven. Um, you can see they've also implemented additional stuff like IPv6 policy routing. That means that your mangle rules on the firewall will work on IPv6 now. And there's additional other stuff like VRF light support on IPv6, etc. Okay, so let's just go down. Um, this is quite nice. They've also got RPKI support. So this is also more for your BGP itself. It's with the routing filters. So a lot of changes are there. And I'll cover these separately in different videos. I just wanna to touch on the big changes. Uh, the OSPF has also been changed. And the, what is nice about the new routing engine is it works almost like with templates now. You don't use um, all of these specific configurations where you set up something like areas in the OSPF or you set up a um, BGP instance or whatnot. You're using templates to configure most of the basic settings. And then it's, it's so quick and easy to actually configure uh, dynamic routing between different routers. Uh, the MPLS has also been updated, although I must stress I have tested some stuff with the MPLS. It does work. Um, VPLS works fine, but I have found that stuff like um, VRF spanning layer three VPNs, where you span a VRF between provider edge routers, that's not really working right now. So I'm hoping they fix that soon in the next update. But um, if you're looking to upgrade to version seven and you make use of that, uh, functionality on your router, uh, probably stay on version six for now. I I'd actually advise that for all of your production environment. Version seven still pretty much feels a lot like beta, even though it officially released and it's got the stable version out. There's a lot of commands that you can only run via the command line. In the same aspect, there are some of these bugs as well that I've talked about now that don't really work uh, as they should work in version six. Um, Microtix also created a new user manager. I personally don't really use the user manager, but it is there is a new one. Perhaps I'll make a video about that as well. Zero tier, so this is awesome. I love zero tier. I recently made a video about this. However, zero tier, uh, it seems like it's only for the ARM architecture at the moment. So ARM and ARM64. Uh, I haven't seen plans for getting it up on the CHRs or MIPS or anything like that. I'm hoping they bring it out on that, but Normus did post something on the Microtech forums about 
that they aren't working on it for the MIPS um, architecture at the moment, which is actually quite sad because I feel like zero tier would be really impactful on those devices because those are the little micro ticks that you typically put at a site, uh, connect on an LTE device. And then if you could bring up a management tunnel to zero tier, that would be so powerful. But um, unfortunately, that's not something you can do right now. And here is just a list of some other basic minor changes that I won't go over. All right, but this basically covers the newsletter. Now I'd like to actually install router OS version seven on one of my small Microtix to show you how quick and easy it is and what changes you can expect. All right, so let's first start by going to Microtix website and I'll just open up a Firefox session here. Go to microtix.com and I'll navigate to the software page. And from the software page, you can see upgrading router OS. It tells you exactly how you can quickly do the upgrade. And this can be done through the package manager. Uh, but in essence, you should just also be able to download the package from here and load it onto your Microtik and that should work just fine as well. And you can see 7.1 has been released on all versions now. However, there is no long term release. There's only the stable release. If you want to get your updates for version six, you can scroll down, click here and here you can find any new updates for version six. Um, what I do find strange is on their website, they've changed something. So here we see there's Winbox and bandwidth test and they've moved stuff like net install and the dude. I'm not sure why exactly, but um, it's been moved. So if you scroll down, you'll see there's a general uh, downloads here where you can get net install and the dude now, but I think they should just put that back. Most people are used to the buttons being there. Um, it might be confusing to somebody that doesn't know where to get net install and they need to downgrade back to version six, uh, perhaps. All right. So this is some way we can get the software image, although I'm just going to use the package manager and do exactly what Microtik recommends. So I'm going to close this. All right. So let's connect onto Winbox. I'll open up a Winbox session, connect onto this neighbor and this Microtik, it's a 951, but it's using a default configuration. So there's nothing special or fancy on it. Let me just zoom in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our system and packages. And as you can see, this is the current version that we're using. And all I'm going to do is do a check for updates. And now we can navigate to the testing or development, or if you've got a newer version installed, you might even see an upgrade channel that you can select. And this would just bring you up to version 7.1, which is the official release of the stable version. So let's do a download and install. All right, so now it's busy just uh, rebooting and it will boot up with version 7.1. All right, there we go. There's our neighbor and we can see there is version 7.1 that's been released. So let's connect with admin blank. And this is something new on all of the new software versions. You'll see it will ask you to put a password on the Microtik if you're not using one, which is good, but you shouldn't just have no password. And let's zoom in and let's look at all of the changes. So first things first, there is a few additional uh, features. There is like the wire guard that you can actually configure now. Uh, if we go to our interfaces, there's additional stuff like VXLAN that's running here. Um, with the wireless, I do believe they are bringing out additional new wireless features. Um, I might not be able to do any of that cool stuff on this small router board, but there is bigger channels or bands that are coming out. Uh, so you can definitely, I think, think about Wi-Fi 6 stuff uh, running on the Microtik. Our routing. So here we can see if I go to the BGP, this has changed a lot. So now you use templates and connections. There's no more instances or peers that you configure. And again, I'll make different videos on how to set up BGP or OSPF on the Microtik. I'm just showing you that they have actually changed quite a bit in how you set things up. However, if you did have those things configured. I did see that the configuration does get translated over to um, version seven, although some things are a bit wacky and they don't actually translate correctly and then your peers might not come up. So just something to take note of if you do upgrade a router where you're running BGP off of, um, or even OSPF. I've heard of people having some issues between version seven and version six routers. I personally haven't had that issue before, but um, something to be on the lookout for. And there's just so many extra changes, guys. As you can see, um, I like this. This is a little Windows thing that you can actually navigate to your different windows that you've got open. We've got our IP and IPv6 stacks. So if you want to configure something for the firewall uh, for IPv4 stuff, you'll come here to IP and then firewall. If it's something related to the IPv6, you'll go to IPv6 and then this firewall to configure things. 
I do believe they've also added something like the router ID that you can set on the router so it can be used by all of the different routing uh, protocols. Same router ID. That's actually quite useful as well. And any other major changes that I can see? Oh, um, something that they've moved as well. If we look at the routing table, this is actually quite interesting. And I do have a few questions from viewers asking, hey, how do you do stuff like VRFs now? Because if you go to your route list, um, there's no more VRF tab here. And also you'll notice there's no like button here that you can switch between the routing tables. So you can't go to like your voice VRF or something from here. It's, <laughs> it's all just one big routing table at the moment. But if you go to IP, you can actually go to VRF here, and then you can add a VRF. And also if you go to the routing, there's actually routing tables now. Think of this like the IP tables on a Linux firewall. So if you create a VRF, I'm just gonna create one and call it voice as an example, and add an interface like Ether5 to it, then you'll see it created a routing table called voice as well. And now any IPs or routes that exist for um, that voice VRF, it will be picked up in this main routing table. All right, so let's add a new bridge. And then from the bridge, I'll just call this voice bridge, voice bridge. And all I'm going to do is that IP address. I'm going to move from Ether5 to voice bridge. And then let's add that voice bridge to our VRF. So IP VRF, add uh, voice bridge, apply that. And if we look at our routing table, we'll see the gateway is this voice or voice bridge at voice bridge. So that at is actually telling the routing table or this route list to which routing table this route belongs to. So just something to take note of. Uh, this has changed a bit. I actually do hope they bring back the little windows here that you can switch between because that's pretty, pretty neat. All right. So those are all of the major changes. And as you can see, I did upgrade my router and I've still got internet access. So this is actually quite nice. Um, let's just go back to Microtix webpage to confirm that everything still works actually. And it works fine. Um, there is no like massive issues by going to version 7.1. And if you are buying any new routing equipment, especially the new CCRs they're bringing out, they run version seven by default. So version seven is definitely the future. And I do believe you should embrace it, but also be cautious when you do upgrade any production environment to seven. Um, maybe wait for a long-term release before you upgrade any production environment and don't just do a big bang and put all your routers on version 7. I'd suggest upgrading one router, seeing how it performs, what's happening, and then you can do other routers as well. Alright, so this will wrap up the video. I just wanted to show you what changes there are and how easy it is to install version 7.1 on your own Microtik. And you can install this on any Microtik almost. So, hope you enjoyed and catch you in the next video. See ya!